Let's talk a little bit about forms in React. Forms tend to be actually a really important part of having a web application. And I found from teaching students at vSchool that it's actually a rather tricky part of React because we do things a little bit differently than we're used to when it comes to forms. So I'm going to do something a little bit different in that I want you to do a couple things before continuing on with this lesson. The first thing is I want to make sure that you understand state as well as you can. You don't have to be an expert with it, but as long as you have been able to follow along with everything we've talked about so far in state and been able to complete the challenges, you should be good. If not, please go back and spend some extra time with state. The next thing is I want you to actually pause this video and go to the React documentation on forms. I've put the link right here. And this does a pretty thorough job talking about the concept of forms in React. Once you've done that, you can move on. So with forms in React, we actually do things a little bit different than we're used to with vanilla JavaScript. In the vanilla JavaScript DOM API, you create your form in the HTML, and once the user decides to submit the form, you go through all of your form inputs and gather all the data together pretty much at the last second. And that's when you would do any kind of form validation that you need and so forth. Well, with React, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Instead of waiting until the very end, right before submitting the form to gather all of the information, we're actually going to constantly keep track of all the information in state which means on every keystroke, we're actually going to update state so that we can always have the most updated version of what the user is typing into the form. To really illustrate this, let's just start with a single text input. Down here, instead of a div, I'm going to render a form. And I'll put a single input inside of there. We'll give it a type of text. And let's give it a placeholder for now, just to keep things simple. Let's say we're gathering the first and last name of a person. We'll start with first name. Okay, so like I said, Normally our form might have a button that says submit the form. And at that point in the vanilla JavaScript DOM way of doing things, we would gather all of the information typed into all the inputs. But in React, we want to watch for every single change to this input box. So think for a second how we might do something like that. Well, input boxes have an event that can get fired called on change. And so what we might do is every single time the input changes in the input box, we will run a function. Let's call it this dot handle change. This function obviously doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. Now my goal is to make it so that every single time somebody types in here, I actually update state. And I want to do a couple things. I want to grab the current value of this input box every single time it changes. And I want to then update state to reflect what the current value of that input box is. Well, first of all, my state currently doesn't have anything saving anything right now, right? So I'm going to add a property called first name. 
pool just started as an empty string. Now I have something that I can update every time the handle change function runs. Okay, well to update, I use this dot set state anytime I want to change the state. Truthfully, I don't care what the previous state was, so I'm just going to provide an object here that says the first name property should become something. Well, what am I going to put here? Well, I need this to be the current value of my input box. If you're familiar at all with the vanilla JavaScript DOM API, then you know that when events fire, they pass a predetermined parameter into our function. We don't get to choose in this instance what's actually going to be here. It's always going to pass to us information about the event that fired. And this event has some really important information. For example, I can get access to the value of the input box by saying event dot target. Target represents the element in which the event was fired dot value. And that's the value of the input box. And so what I've done here is I've said every single time a character is typed into this input box, run the handle change function. And the handle change function changes the state so that the first name property of state is updated to reflect whatever the current value of this input box is. Now, I can't open the dev tools and inspect state inside of Scrimba, and so I'm just going to create a little h1 that will display whatever the state is, just so we can see it. And now I'm actually going to run into a little error. You'll see that it says I can't read the property set state of undefined. See if you can figure out what I'm missing. Anytime we have a class method that's calling set state, we need to make sure we bind it inside the constructor. And so Inside the constructor, I'll put this dot handle change equals this dot handle change dot bind to this. Okay, so let me refresh this again. And I will start typing, and you'll see every single character is updating state. Okay, well, I have something that's going to violate the dry principle, the don't repeat yourself principle. Now, what's going to happen if I want to create another input for my last name? So I've made another input that is also running my handle change function. Let me initialize a last name property in my state. And I added my h1 to show what the last name property of state is. Okay, so I have a first name, last name. First name works great. But what happens when I type in the last name? Notice it just gets rid of everything from the first name. That's because I've hard-coded into my handle change that it's updating the first name property of state. Obviously, one way around this would be to make a whole extra function called handle last name change or something like that and make this on change be a different function altogether. 
but that's not going to work in a larger form that may have like 50 inputs or something crazy like that. So instead, what we're going to do is we are not going to hard code first name here. And we're going to give a name property to our inputs that perfectly matches what our state is. First name, capital N, and last name, capital N. And remember, up in our handle change, we have this event that we're receiving. Well, this event has a bunch of information about the input that is firing this event. For example, we grabbed the value of the input box, but I can grab any part of the input's object that I want, not only the value, but I can also grab the name property. And so to the left of my object here in the property name here, I can say event.target, which is my input box, dot name, which is the name property. This isn't quite right, right? Because this is a syntax error. If I want this to actually represent the first name property or the last name property, I need to make sure to wrap this in square brackets. And this works because the name property is a string. And if I'm describing a string property name inside of an object, I can wrap it in square brackets. This is just a principle of JavaScript that you may or may not be familiar with. And so now when I refresh this, anytime I type into the first name box, I get a change to my state in first name. And anytime I type into my last name box, I get a change to the last name. Okay, as a quick aside, this same principle here is going to work whether I am using a type of text or anything else that's text-based, like an email or phone or number. All of those are essentially going to use this exact same handle change function. And you need to make sure that you give it a name property that perfectly matches the property in state and that you pass your onChange function to it. Now I'm actually splitting forms into a two-part lesson. And in the next one, we're going to talk about some of the other types like checkboxes, radio buttons, text areas, and select boxes. But before we get there, there's one more thing I want to touch on, and that's the concept of a controlled form. If you did what you're supposed to do and went over and read the React documentation on forms, you read about controlled forms. The idea is that we actually want what's displayed inside of our form to perfectly match up with what is in our state. And right now, state is being reactive, as in every time the input in the box changes, state updates according to what's in the input box. Well, with a controlled form, state actually directs what is inside and showing up inside of the input box. This is kind of a splitting hairs distinction, but it really jives well with the idea that state should be the single source of truth. It doesn't have to be that complicated. The only thing we really need to do, especially with these text inputs, is add a value property. And the value should always be this dot state dot and then whatever property that the box is holding. First name, last name. And when single elements start to get too long like this, I like to put each of these attributes into their own lines.
Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, now we can see that everything, I'm going to refresh this. Everything is still working essentially the same as it was before. But now what is showing up in this input box is because of what the current version of state is. In other words, I'm forcing the value or what shows up inside of the input box to exactly match what state is. I'm also going to give you one quick best practice that will help you avoid a really difficult to debug bug that could come up in the future. In this case, we're not seeing it, and I'm not going to worry too much about explaining what that bug is exactly. But a really good idea is instead of directly accessing the name and value properties by drilling into the event.target object here, you can save yourself a lot of grief by simply pulling those values out of the target before you set any state. Using some basic object destructuring, I can say name value equals event.target. And then down here, I can just say name value. If this is something that you're actually super interested in understanding, you can look into React's synthetic event, and you may get a better understanding of why this is important, but it can be really helpful to make a copy of the name and value before you run set state. Okay, that's enough for this part of the lesson. Take some time to go over this again and digest it. Feel free to practice with it. We're going to talk about forms part two next, and then we'll have a practice that goes over both of these parts together.